Hey everyone. So I'm going to talk about our Workspace Cloud today, and I'm going to give you a demo of setting up Workspace Cloud and an overview of what it is. So let's start with just that overview. What is Workspace Cloud? Well, here on the left, you can see a presentation that I give fairly often, which shows kind of all the different services that we have at Citrix, share files and mobiles and apps and desktop. And what we're going to focus today is Zen Desktop. And what you see in the cloud, and actually what's represented by blue here, are services that Citrix actually manages. So here you see Zen Desktop, and you see the SQL Server, the broker, license server, sorry, storefront license server, and the, and the provisioning elements. That's all being managed in the cloud that the customer doesn't have to manage. Over here, we have the customer, and the customer can choose to be on-prem or off-prem, that's up to them. But all they need to do is deploy this thing called the Edge Service, which I'm going to show you here in a few minutes. Um, Edge Service then handles all the identification, authorization, and provisioning. I'm not going to do provisioning in today's demo because I'm I'm choosing to go off premises with this. So I'm going to start this thing up as if I'm a customer myself and I want to be born in the cloud. And to do that, I'm going to start with AWS. So if you're not familiar with AWS, um, you'll understand that uh, you'll need to understand that instances are like virtual machines, actually like virtual machine templates. So I've actually launched three instances for this demo. So I'll show you what I did to do that. I created three instances. I chose Windows instances, and I chose these medium purpose workload instances, which are two CPUs and four gigs of memory. Um, after I deploy these, it takes about five to 10 minutes for those to deploy. Um, I came up and I named one, named them as domain controller, a Zen app server, and I created a user workstation. So we could actually kind of test what a user would work, uh, in this scenario as if they were on prem. Um, so I deployed these three things and then I stood up a, the domain controller. I had to actually create it, make it a domain controller. So I promoted it to a domain controller and I added these two guys into the domain. Now that took me about 30 minutes of work. Um, and I didn't want that to be a part of the video. So I'm just going to show you those machines kind of after I've done 30 minutes of work on them. And so you can see on the domain controller, this is as clean as a machine gets from Amazon. These are just the tools. Think of these as your if you're using a Zen server, your Zen server tools or VMware, your you know, VMware tools, the tools that give you all the driver set for that VM. So these are the tools that come native with the domain controller. And I show you that just to show you, I'm not pulling any wool over your eyes. This is a clean as a slate uh, instance from Amazon. Only thing I've done is I've made it a domain controller. On the Zen app server, there's a little bit more going on. I've actually went ahead and installed the virtual delivery agent or our VDA. Um, I did that because that takes 10 minutes and it requires a reboot. And again, I didn't want anyone to have to sit here for 10 minutes. There's only one step different in this install uh, that I'll actually be able to show you regardless that it's already installed. And then on the workstation, all I did, this is a blank workstation. I added it to my domain and I just added Citrix receiver. So we're going to, once I I actually run through this, um, you're going to actually see us connect to an application from receiver. So right now, if I were to open receiver, you see that it's not connected to anything. Um, there's no magic going on. It's, you know, it's at that kind of default, give me your address so we can connect to a Zen app server state. So by the end of this, we'll actually connect to an application and hopefully this will only take about five minutes. So here we go. Clean slate, domain controller to Zen app server. Now, the first thing I need to do is deploy this edge service I was showing you on my PowerPoint. So how do you do that? Well, it's pretty simple actually. Um, I need to bring up this this thing again. Uh, I want to show you Workspace Cloud. So this is my Workspace Cloud account. Um, I'm going to log into it, and from here you're going to see this is what um, our customers are going to be interacting with as they use um, our Workspace Cloud. So let me try to log in again here. So ah, bad password. Let's just do gunner.citrixworkspaces.com. And at that time, it just auto-authenticated for me. Good. So here we are. Uh, I haven't deployed any workspaces. I have no identity domains. That's going to be my Active Directory. And I haven't created any offerings yet. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get my Active Directory tied to this thing. So I'm going to go to Identity Management. And it's going to ask me to download this Edge service, which I've already actually done uh, that. And it's stored over here. So this C drive, share, and there's my CPC edge service. So I'm gonna install this in real time, cancel that, because I always make the mistake. I gotta run as administrator. And here she goes, and it's gonna ask me to authenticate. So same thing, gunnerburger at citrix.com, and my password. All right, so I have to choose my customer name, which I've created a customer that's called Gunner for this demo and next. So while that installs, I'm going to show you what I do on Zen app servers. So 
I need to install VDA on the Zenup server, which I told you I already did. So I'm going to show you the one difference in that install. Now the VDA install is pretty straightforward. It's just next, next, finish. But there's one thing it asks you to do, which is to point it to your broker. Now here you'll see I've actually pointed it to DC1 or the other server that I'm installing Ed Service onto. So let's close out of that. We, now that install is done and let's go ahead and refresh here. So now you can see I've installed the Edge service. All right, that's it. I'm done. Uh, this doesn't have to be on a domain controller, by the way. I just did this for simplicity's sake. Um, but I'm done. I put this Edge server here, and I'm I'm. There's no brokers, no studio, none of that stuff's been installed. And then over here on the VDA, I simply point it to that server. I did that already to save myself 10 minutes. So I'm just going to cancel all that installation. So and then once that VDA is stood up, I put Google Chrome because the point of this is to actually deploy an application that we'll be able to use in a second. So for all intents and purposes, I'm done with these VMs. So let's go back to our Workspace Cloud. So let's uh, go back in Identity Management and see if our, um, I was already there, uh, see if our uh, domain shows up yet. Now this takes sometimes about a minute uh, for it to show up, but typically it's pretty quick. Um, there it is. So my domain that I called, my domain controller was cwc.local, and you can see it's online, and that wasn't there a second ago when I, was, when I came to this page. So we know that my identity is now created. So identity domains are now one. Now keep in mind, I didn't do a VPN. This is all done through that edge service uh, package you saw me install. So now it's time to create a workspace. Well, to do that, I need to first give it an offering. So I have no offerings right now. So let's let's uh, get that Google Chrome uh, published as an application. Now I'm going to configure. I'm going to click on configure, which will bring up um, this secondary website, which I actually already had up, but. Uh, timed out. So let me bring it up again. Um, when I click configure, what's going to come up is basically studio. So anyone running Zen apps and desktop, you're probably already familiar with studio. Um, this is going to change over time in the product, but for right now, we just use studio to make it easy to, uh, for people that already, under, already understand Zen apps and desktop just to use that. Um, but eventually it's all going to happen within the web UI itself. So I'm just waiting for Studio to come up here because this is actually an HTML5 um, application, you know, Windows application running in HTML5. Uh, so we're actually kind of eating our own dog food here. We're using a published app, uh, Windows published app, as a part of the workflow. So I'm waiting for that that to come up, and there she is. And over here, this is going to be really familiar with everybody. Uh, I've got my studio and I'm, I don't have any machine catalogs yet. I don't have any delivery groups yet because we just stood this thing up. So let's get that machine catalog going. So we need to add our Zen app server um, to the machine catalogs. So let's bring this thing up and keep in mind, I'm in studio here, but I didn't actually deploy studio, right? This is all living in the cloud. And over time, hopefully that won't even matter because we'll just be in a web UI anyway. So we're going to a Windows Server instance. Um, I didn't use PBS or MCS because I'm just using AWS. Right? It's handling the provisioning for me. So I just manually did it. And we're going to add that server. So I'm going to go to Zen App 1 and we're going to check names. Now here's the fun part about this is that it's checking against my Active Directory, but I'm in the cloud right now, right? This is, this is workspace services that we're seeing, but it still saw my machine thanks to that edge service. So that's done, and we're just going to give this thing a really interesting name like Zen App Finish. So now I've got my machine catalog coming up. So the next step, as anyone would know, is you create your delivery group. So let's go to delivery group creation, Zen App Server. We're going to grab all one of those servers here. Next, and we're just going to do applications for this test. So next to the application, and this is the one thing you'll notice different in this workflow than you would with the standard studio deployment. There's this radio button that says with um, basically handle user assignments with uh, Workspace Cloud. So I'm not going to do the user assignments within Studio. And this is kind of the first step of seeing things not happening within Studio, but within the web UI. So we're going to grab that Google Chrome that I installed. There she is. Next. And we're going to give it a name, something really fancy like Google Chrome. Finish. So I've stood this up and I've got Google Chrome running. So now let's get out of here and let's go back to our our uh, workspace cloud instance. So um, from here, I'm just going to reload the page and go to my applications. Up, oh, up oh, there she is. So it just showed up, and there it is, Google Chrome. So all that was configured. This is typically what you'd think of like storefront configuration. Obviously, all that's gone. We don't have to configure that stuff. But everything I just did in there is now ready to rock and roll. So let's go back to home, and you see now I have something to offer a workspace. So let's create a workspace. 
Well, let's create a new one. We're going to call this one my video demo. And right now, only thing I have to offer is what you saw me create, which is Google Chrome, right? So it's kind of kind of boring, but I'm just doing a quick video. But here you see desktops and apps. And so over here, you would have all your applications listed. You have any desktops you have listed, including virtual desktops, Windows 7 or Windows, you know, Windows Server, whichever you prefer. But eventually, as this service gets um, more and more on it, you'll, you'll see ShareFile and you'd see Zen Mobile. You'd see all of our offerings being offered here. So as I create a workspace, it actually is a lot more than just an application. It is truly a workspace but you know this is beta and so that's what you're getting for right now so create workspace and it's done let's go back home and i just want you to see that now i have my id domain and i have a workspace set up so the next step to this process would be to actually log into the workspace and that's why i built this other machine so this is all on a private IP subnet just to make it easy. So 10.00. And so I wanted something within that subnet to, to test. So as I showed you earlier, this was empty. That's, you know, there's nothing in the workspace. In fact, I probably should do this to control panels, uh, programs and features. And you can see the only thing I have is, is receiver, but that's going to change here in a second. So what's my server address? Same thing. Actually, no, uh, the server address is my cloud storefront that was stood up. I didn't have to stand this up, but it was part of the CWC offering. And I think they set me up as zendesktop.net, if I recall. I think I'm gonna write zendesktop.net. So as through CWC offering, you get, you know, they point you to whatever you are, all you want. That's the one that uh, my team gave me. And this should work, we'll see. All right, so there it is. It wants my username, password. So I'm just going to go ahead and give it. Uh, notice this is my CWC domain. So this is the, the domain that I've created pretty much in real time in front of you guys. So cwc.local. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say, remember my password here and log in. I could also show you this in, on the web while that's going on. I'll go ahead and show you that gunner.zendesktop.net uh, slash Citrix store web. And so you can see this thing, how this is built. This is the same storefront I'm pointing to, but this is a hosted storefront. So once again, I'll drag this over. Storefront, hosted. I'm, that's all I'm doing is showing you the hosted storefront. And it's got my credentials in there because this is my first time shooting this video. And I'll log in and you'll see that application of Citrix, or sorry, uh, Google Chrome, whenever it uh, finishes its login here. Oh, you know what? I just made a mistake. And uh, actually, it's a good mistake to make. Um, so Workspaces, I, I haven't actually said anyone can use this. I haven't subscribed it to anybody. So we got to add a subscription. And we're going to allow domain users uh, to use it um, and then publish it. So there you go. Mistake in real time, but I don't care. It shows, shows how the thing works anyway. Um, so now let's go back to that Citrix receiver and let's hit uh, re reload here. And now that I actually have entitled it, there there she goes. And let's go over here. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and allow it to do that. Your account's been created successfully. And now because I've done that, I should be able to open this thing up. Connecting. Again, this is connected to that storefront in the cloud. And I can add my favorite apps to this thing, which should show Chrome here shortly. Let's do refresh apps. Refresh apps. Well, I don't know what's going on with that. I'll go, I'll get us get around it by launching it directly from here. Gunner does and desktop.net. Oops. Slash Citrix store web. <clears throat> uh, allow. 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 And let's do CBC, G Burger. There she is, and we're gonna click on it. Uh, actually, I need to add it. And now let's click on it. Open. Starting application. And there she goes. Google Chrome is now running on this thing. And as we saw before, 
it's not actually installed, but once receiver wakes up, I don't know why it's waking up, why it hasn't actually displayed yet here. It normally does. Um, we'll do it one quick refresh again and see if that helps anything. If not, I'll just uh, give up on letting receiver go because it doesn't matter. I got Chrome up and running and up oh, there. Finally, this thing went. So it just took a few minutes, uh, unfortunately, but uh, now that's in there. And so with, with that being in receiver, the one thing I wanted to show you was that now it'll show up in my control panels as if it was installed. So delivered by Citrix. So uh, it took a few minutes to get there. I apologize for that, but I hope you like the demo of basically setting up an environment from scratch. Have a good one.